that. It's still working through um, things on my screen. Mine says we're on. E, will you hand me my chopstick right there? Alicia, put that on. Now I'm like. <laughs> we we are live. It just popped up on my Facebook. We are live. Yep. And if you go to your Team Fisher homepage, that's where you're going to see it live. And then you can share it. You will probably want to close that because you'll get an echo. Next to the sink. And then, uh, Leisha, can you mute attendees at all? Do you have access to that? That's an excellent question. I don't think there are any attendees yet, so I don't think I... Or panelists. Um, I am not seeing it live on my page. Are you seeing it live on yours? Mm -hmm. Oh, there we are. Ah, there we go. I don't see where I could mute anybody else. Okay, I might. So if you guys will just mute yourselves if you need to. How do you mute? And I am just going, to, oh, it's only going to let me share to pay. It's not letting me share to my private page. Is it letting you guys share to? No. Nope. Oh, if you guys will just mute yourselves if you need to. Hi, Q Sharon is on as well. I'm going to share this to. And I am just going, oh, it's only going to let me share to pay. It's not letting me share to my private page. Is it letting you guys share to? No, oh, if you guys don't mute yourself, just mute them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Give me half a second. Okay. And I believe we can just close this now. And I'll share the screen. Okay. I think we have everybody, uh, let's just give everybody a couple minutes to log on right now um, and get it, uh, get things going because it's just 12 o'clock, I think, right now. And I just want to thank everybody for, um, for coming along on the technology ride with us because this is something new for us and that we're learning along the way as well. So we appreciate it. And uh, taking some time. We're getting a ton of people asking us about what is happening in the market and kind of what we're seeing and uh, just asking what we're expecting. And so we wanted to take some time and go over what that looks like. And uh, also, if you guys do have questions, uh, we are working through being able to just have live questions asked as well, but I'm not sure that's going to come through today. So um, I wanted to take some time to a lot of the slides that we are going to go through today are, uh, they've been provided by Keeping Current Matters. They have a lot of information as they are tracking information for us as well and is a good place for uh, a good resource to be able to help support us. Um, things that we are going to cover today though. So I wanted to cover perspective from uh, our insights what we know uh, from being in the housing market and from what's been happening for us, as well as uh, just our perspective of um, the current experience we've been in and the way we see the future coming. Um, we've had those questions brought up by clients, friends, and family. So hopefully a lot of this will answer some of those questions. And then uh, we really wanna strive to be your real estate resource. And we want you to be able to know that you can trust us to tell you the truth and to help navigate through uncertain times and know that we are actively in the market. We are actively working. Our team is, is currently managing, um, Jess, is it 21 
transactions right now? Yeah, we're 21 currently. And so we're seeing what's happening as far as any slowdowns or, or the way buyers and sellers are behaving. Um, and then also we wanted to cover a couple of ideas and solutions that we've been brainstorming as to what to do during um, some of the changes that are happening. Now, we wanna be clear though, we're not economists, we're not financial advisors, none of us have crystal balls, we're not clairvoyant. So we're just going off of and sharing some of the things that are happening in our business, what we're seeing and what's happened in the past so that we can start to follow some of those trends. All right, so one of the big questions is uh, around the recession and understanding that uh, a housing crisis does not necessarily equal a housing recession. One of the last recessions that we went through was in 2008. Uh, but what's interesting about what's happening in the market today is that it is actually behaving much more like it did after 9-11. What's going on is that we are having um, people behave out of fear and anxiety. Uh, they're not traveling, they're not going out. Uh, it's definitely at a little bit more extreme than it was then as far as restaurants being closed down. That is very different than what happened back in 2008. In 2008, that we had, uh, we had excessive inventory, we had poor loans, there was a lot more in comparison and, and we expect that the housing market will trend the same as it did after 9-11 and be very similar. Because one thing that took place is and I want to actually go. One thing that took place in this was back in 2001 when the market crashed, when the stock market crashed, home values actually stayed pretty consistent. One thing that, that changes the difference between having a housing crisis is that we still need, everyone still needs a place to live. That doesn't change. Right now, and with anxiety and other things that's going on, people are eating out less. People are not flying. People are not traveling, but they do still need a house. One thing that we've noticed as we've actually seen a push in the market personally right now, just because the people who are on the market are motivated. They actually have to buy or have to sell. So what's happened is it's eliminated people who are testing the market. It's eliminated people out looking who weren't ready to buy or needing to make a move. And so for us, we're actually seeing a push right now. I don't know how long that is gonna last, but it, it's been a little bit different. Now, one thing that I wanted to talk about was this home graph, and it does have a lot of information on it. This is our personal information for Utah County. So this isn't on a national level. This is us and what's happened here. And it's got a lot of information because this is actually everything from 2001 until current. Now, the different lines that are on here, and I don't know if, you'll, if you guys are able to see that cursor, yes? Okay, so this bottom black line, these are the homes that sold. The top line, the green line here, these are the homes that are listed, okay? So what I want you guys to notice is this is back in 2008, there was a massive amount of inventory. So we created a perfect storm back in 2008. Not only was there a massive amount of inventory, but lending regulations were so loose. You guys know that there was a lot of stated loans that were going on. People were actually borrowing uh, up to 125% loan to value on their homes and is so different than what that looked like back in 2001. Now, I pulled out all the other crazy numbers that are on here and just left the blue line. The blue line is actually home values. The home val this is our home values all the way from 2001 to uh, 2019. So we're soon gonna have our home values come out for first quarter for uh, 2020, but we don't have those yet. What I wanna talk about is uh, what, Everybody says, oh my gosh, what, what's going to happen to my home value? Or am I going to just, I have to sell in a month or I have to sell in six months. Are my, is my home value going to remain the same? To be honest, we don't know exactly, but we can follow trends and, and see what to expect. Now, after 9-11 and we went into the economical 
recession. Home values across here, actually the appreciation stayed very steady and even after that. We also, I wanna show what happened in 2007. It took us a chunk of time to um, hit low on prices. I had one uh, friend call and say, hey, I think it's a great time to buy. I want the, the market's gonna crash and I'm gonna pick up a great deal. The reality is it actually took us, if you look across here, it took us five years to go down to the low in the market. That's not something that happens overnight. And it's not something I'm gonna expect major values decrease. It's one of the biggest differences is the inventory that is available. So our inventory levels right now, back in 2007, we had eight months worth of inventory. So let's kind of talk about what that is. If no new homes came on the market today, and if homes were being purchased at the same rate as they are today, we would have eight months worth of inventory back in 2007. Now today, national average, we have three months worth of inventory. And you know, in, in Utah County and in some areas, we are experiencing that we might only have one and a half months worth of inventory. And to help you understand how that relates to, to the market and buyers and sellers, a healthy market is typically between five and six months worth of inventory. That means it's balanced. It's, it's not a buyer's market or a seller's market. You guys all know we've been experiencing a seller's market for some time now. At, even as of right now, we're experiencing that. You know, some of the homes that we listed last week, all the homes that we listed ended up with offers right away. And even um, our West Jordan home ended up with 15 offers on it. That's not a healthy balanced market. So the positive is, is the slowing that we expect to have happen is gonna probably balance our market. It's gonna be able to help us out with that. And that is one of the biggest differences between, um, I just wanna go back here, the differences between where we are at today or back in 2001 compared to where we were at in 07, okay? So that's gonna be one of the driving forces. You guys can also see the, the prices. We've just had that steady incline year over year over year. We've experienced 8 to 10% appreciation year over year over year. So we are going to, I am anticipating that that flatten out over the next several years. And, and actually probably by 2021, 2022, you're going to see a good, a good spike again. Now, one of the other big differences as to what happened in 2008 and why it's so different than it is today is the way Americans were behaving. One of the things that took place in 08 is, uh, you know, I referenced some people were getting uh, loans for 125% of the value of their home. And they were taking out all of their equity and they were spending it on things like fancy cars and timeshares and whatever they were doing, they were lavishly wasting a lot of money. The three years leading up to 2000, the, the housing crisis back in 2007, 2008, they had spent a total of $824 billion of their home equity. That is so different as of today. Americans are behaving very differently. In the last three years leading up to today, they have only spent 232 billion. That's like a third. That piece is huge because we are behaving differently. We will be able to sustain what is happening and, any, and those shifts that are going on in the market. One of the other uh, things that is taking place different today versus what happened back in 2007 is, is that we have a lot, the government is stepping in right away. For people who have lost their jobs or are on reduced hours, uh, both FHA, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac both have plans to step in to be able to help relieve that. So they have uh, already immediate foreclosure and eviction uh, for single family homeowners and FHA insured mortgages for the next 60 days. And then for Federal Housing Finance Agency announced that it is directing Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to suspend foreclosures and evictions for the next 60 days. And I think they jumped on it very quickly in comparison to what we were looking at before. Now, the, the housing market compared to the stock market. Now this slide just, this one compares what does it look like 
on the stock market because you guys know that the stock market has been hit. We do know stock market values are down. This graph shows what happened in 2001 after 9-11 when similar things happened to the stock market. We were down 45% on the S&P. And I think, I, I honestly I haven't looked at my 401k because I don't, I, I'm not going to look at it. But one thing that I do know is following 9-11, this graph shows what home appreciation values were in 2000, 2001, and 2002. I mean, it really does show you what takes place that, that you have a little bit of a slowing, but the reality is, is that one is not actually directly tied to the other. They're two different things. I want to go back to the inventory levels and what's happening here as well. So let's talk a little bit more about um, the equity that is in people's houses. I think we skimmed over what that looked like. People are not pulling out equity. But one thing that I was really surprised about that I feel like doesn't get talked about much because we hear so much about debt is that 37% of Americans actually don't have a mortgage on their house. Did that surprise you guys on the team? Yeah, I would say so. But it, I feel like a lot of people have um, become smarter with their money, especially since 2008. Uh, and I didn't think it was that many, though. Yeah, so not only do 37% actually don't have a mortgage at all, but out of the 67% uh, that's left, one out of four of those people own at least 50% of their home. They only owe, they, they have at least 50% equity. So I feel like that shift in that dynamic has changed greatly in what's going to happen for us um, and that people aren't going to walk away from their homes. It's not going to be an abandonment. It's a whole different situation. If you owe more than it's even worth out of the get go, you're going to walk away from, from that money. So I think that is a, a huge piece. And you guys also, we've really had tight, much tighter restrictions on loans. And I don't know how many people have gotten loans lately, but they are documenting so much more um, that they're getting smart. I do think the government's helped control some of what this, um, this money looks like as to why it hasn't been pulled out. And, and I'm, Jessica, I think you are right. I think people, anyone who experienced some of the challenges through 07, 08, uh, they got smarter. They, we've learned a lot. So this just is not the same situation that we were once in. And let's see. So one thing is, is the question is, is how long is this going to last? What's it going to look like? We don't know how long the virus is going to last and we don't know how long things are going to be shut down for. And there's a lot of people who it's directly affecting right now. I mean, whether they're job losses or um, we're all, we all have our kids at home right now. That is real. But we just, we don't know how long this is gonna last. One thing that I think this uh, is interesting is they did a survey for business owners. Um, if it were going to end today, how long would you estimate it to take for your company to get back to normal as usual? And it's pretty impressive to look that business owners are feeling like within one to three months after this virus gets under control, they'll be back to normal. That's really what stopped the market right now, though. There's not anything else that is preventing the market from moving forward. And in Utah, we are very blessed. Uh, we have a, a huge diversity in our economy and even in our job force that it's not quite the same as it is in some locations. We are very diversified. So I think just like in 07 and 08, Utah fared very well in recovering. I believe that they're gonna be one of the strongest, strongest places in recovering as well. So just between we have a lot of tech, we still have manufacturing, uh, we have a lot of education, um, just a huge workforce. And I think we're, it, we're gonna feel it um, this is actually what they're anticipating happening is that, of course, going into second quarter, um, we're seeing a slowing on everything. Uh, production for everything is 
it has to go down, sales goes down, second quarter is going to be a hard quarter, but we're close to having a lot of uh, movement on solutions for the virus. And I think that by third quarter, you're going to see us pull back out. And actually, they're just showing uh, huge expectations for 20, uh, 2021. So, all right. Now, I really wanted to come up with some um, solutions as we talk about things. You know, we're in the same environment where our, our team is actively working. We're going to try and do everything we can to maintain our business through this. We're figuring out technology so we can do one-on-one -on -one consultations just over a video call, um, doing a lot through uh, learning how to do everything we can as virtually as possible to keep our distance. Um, I also just in things like our showings and houses that we've held open, just being really clear about what that looks like for, for limiting a lot of those things, whether it's we're making sure everybody has hand sanitizer coming in, everybody's using Clorox wipes to open up any doors and limiting the number of people that are there. But I think Shannon, you brought up a good point is that it's just really important that you're not out looking just to look. I mean, this week while you've been out showing, what are some of the conversations you've had with your buyers and what that looks like? Sorry, I'm in the Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing that everyone, the conversations that we're having around right now is um, being realistic about what your budget maybe has been um, and the reality of what that might be moving forward. So um, usually I would say that the conversations as far as finances are dealt with a little bit more intimately with the lender. Um, but during this time, I feel stronger that we are, we are to also have those conversations as far as what your monthly income and expenses are. Um, and really, I think now more than ever, of not pushing the budget and living within your means and maybe even slightly below is going to be a protection for buyers now more than it ever has. I think it's always plays a role, um, but I think as a society, sometimes we tend to stretch the budget a little bit more. And I think right now is really the time to tighten everything up and make sure that we're not overspending and we're not over budgeting um, and just preparing and being creative, whether you're going to have tenants, um, whether you're going to have roommates, share expenses and just getting creative so that you can still be a homeowner um, and just using different strategies so that you're spending your money smart. And it sounds like you guys have really limited what you're going to see that if it's not uh, if it's not really going to be a fit it that you're not taking the time to go see those homes that you're not you're just being really careful about how much you're showing. Yeah, I think in in previous times it was it was fun for buyers and helpful to go see a lot of properties um, and really just get a feel. But right now. Um, yeah, we, the preference is really that you can view as many homes as you can online. There is a lot of agents that are doing live videos for their homes so that we don't actually even have to go in, but really only seeing properties that are something that might actually make sense to make an offer on. And if not, really just viewing them online and getting a feel for the market online instead of showing every home in person. Yeah. I think that's a, a big piece. And as I was talking with Erica, I mean, really we're committed to being as, uh, as adaptable as possible. If it means that we even have homeowners do lives for us, if they would not like us in their home, like we're just gonna do whatever it takes to help make sure people get in the homes. For all of our listings, we're doing video tours on all of them as well, but the the reality is is there are going to be people who need to still buy and people who still need to sell and it's going to be important that we do that um is what are you seeing erica well i think real quick we just need to touch on 
I think some people will be like, well, why would somebody need to buy and sell? Like, what are the circumstances around that? And I don't think pe people really realize that in the midst of all this, life has still gone on. People have still had babies and they're in a two bedroom apartment and they need to move. They've had, um, maybe they've had a death in their family. Maybe they got transferred. So when people do need to sell and buy, they need to sell and buy. It's just life still does go on. And um, even with, um, with us in the market, with people still needing homes, we wouldn't have 15 offers on a home if people still didn't need homes. So it just kind of goes to tell you back to, I guess, the housing shortage. We do really have a housing shortage. And that's one thing that is really great about, hate to say great in this time, but it really is, it's still a need and it still is a purpose and it's still a reason why we need to um, still be very connected with our clients. Well, and I think that's really the, the piece is we don't know what six months out is. We do know what today is, right? We do know that it was a week ago where we have 15 offers on a property that we know that there's still 14 other families in that neighborhood looking to buy. Yes. And homes aren't coming on. There are a lot of sellers that are not sure. They're feeling like, I'm not sure my value is still going to be there. But the reality is there are still buyers. And so, I mean, if it's something that makes sense for you, I mean, that's the question I'm getting asked is, is should I still sell? I think it's stepping back and going, does it make sense? Do you need to sell for your family? And yeah, if, it, if that's the case, then we're going to help you navigate through it. And there's absolutely buyers that are ready to buy right now. Um, and there's, there's ways to work through that. And you know what is interesting is that it actually might help some of these buyers get in that yeah. maybe wouldn't have. Um, and I, you know, that's the sentiment that I keep getting over and over from buyers that I'm in contact with on our listings is that they are more determined now than ever to get into a home. Well, um, and I, I think you kind of hit on balance too. You know, we've got, we've had such a market of a selling market and um, where buyers are still buying, it's still a valuable market. Does that make sense? If we had no buyers on the table, then this market, it, it, it would be, it wouldn't work, right? So um, the fact that there's still valuable buyers, there's still a need um, is, it will take this into what we need it to do as far as the value the market value. And right now things are still strong, but one thing that I do know is that each house, because we've had lots of listings that we've been working on, each house and each market is so specific, but we are watching so carefully on what that looks like. And now more than ever, price really matters. We have to make sure we're priced right in the market so that we're not chasing after it. But I think just knowing and watching and being very aware of what's happening every day and making sure that we're communicating with people so that they know what is happening too is just really important. But the difference between now versus six months from now, we know today that this is the the interest rates are are still good. You know, we're hovering right around probably four percent right now. We know that there's still buyers. We know that those things are happening, and that right now things are going really, really, really well. So if there is any any concern, or if you've thought about it, like. I would probably move forward because these are the things that we do know. So, Angie, you touched a little bit on interest rates there. Um, so I want to kind of jump over to Jessica for a second because Jessica, I know you work a lot with um, being the transaction manager. You work a lot with the lenders and the appraisals and all the paperwork on that side once we do go under contract. Um, have you seen a difference at all with appraisals coming in or with rates since all this craziness has started happening? Absolutely. Um, when the offers were made three weeks ago, even we go back, um, we were seeing a shift in the appraisals taking a little bit longer. And um, so I work very closely with the lenders and communicating with them almost on a daily basis. And um, it is interesting because appraisers are choosing not to work right now because of the virus they're choosing not to go into homes 
and it's taking longer. Um, it's taking longer for them to pick up the appraisals so that they can actually go do the inspection. It's taking longer for the reports to come in because the guys who are doing it have more on their plate. And um, I just had one done this week where he was like, I normally don't do residential, but I have five this week and it's crazy that people aren't doing them. So it is, it is interesting to see that shift in, um, in them taking longer and, um, and what that you know, was. One thing I was going to add to that is I was talking with a lender last night and they are, they're getting creative as well as to how to combat this. And there are a lot of, um, they're doing a lot of appraisal waivers to help our clients as well. So if there is enough online data to support the value on that home, then they're able to actually waive that appraisal, save our clients money and save them time so that we're not fighting against having to go out and get an appraisal done. So I, I really appreciated that because I feel like um, they're, they're coming up with ways to, to move through the time as it's changing and navigating us through too. And, and I felt like that was a huge win for us on a couple of our transactions that we're working on right now. Yeah, the lenders really have been so great to move forward um, and, and be creative in this time because it happens so fast and every day is so new that they are adapting with us. And we have some of the most incredible lenders and people that we work with. They are open with their communication, they're on top of it, and um, I really appreciate working with them. Yeah. Have you seen any difference in the amount of appraisals coming in low? Like, has that spiked at all, or have values remained pretty steady on all what you've seen? No, I feel like they've, they've stayed pretty steady. Um, I don't, on our current deals, I haven't seen any of them come in low. Awesome. You know, and we may see something a little bit different because like I said, we've had so many offers that have really driven prices up, but I don't anticipate having anything major happening. I think uh, as before, the same thing is if there's, uh, we're still fighting against making sure we have comparable properties, but it definitely shows that the buyers are serious and um, it, it is a little crazy right now. I It's crazy. Multiple properties we had had offers substantial. I don't know if we should even substantially over our list prices. It just, it's a little crazy. What would you guys say to people who are kind of in that boat of like, I'm expecting a recession. I'm expecting the market to crash. I'm just going to wait till prices go down. What, how would you respond to that question? Happy to talk to or speak to it. I, I don't, the, the challenge that we have is the inventory levels are still too low. Right. So there is still so much demand that there's no way. Even when we had that massive amount of inventory in 08, it still took us five years to see those prices swing like that. And as long as we still have an inventory shortage, the prices are not going to fall. For me, it goes back to um, when we do our buying classes, Angie, when we talk about what you save um, by mm -hmm. to a home now versus you wait a year to save um, so you can afford to get in a home, the value that if you're actually in a home for a year versus waiting to be in a home for a year is, it, there's no question, you should be in a home and be building that equity and be paying off your mortgage versus waiting for the right time but it now is I think that I was gonna say the question is really specific to the right. person and what their situation looks like mm -hmm. if they've got a secure job and there's they're not in jeopardy right now I don't think there's a reason for them not to buy right now interest rates really are still good um, right. we did see them pop up last week I mean we saw them and we've kind of gone from the lowest low to the highest high all within 10 days. Um, so it feels like they've gone up. Uh, we're kind of like sitting right around 4% right now, which is where we were a month ago, but mid month, there was a handful of people that locked in at 2.99. So it feels like this major swing, but it's really, we're doing well right now. 
one thing that came up for us, uh, even as we talked about interest rates, if interest rates go up and they go up quickly, that could impact a buyer's ability to buy and buying power. That's why right now we know what the interest rates are today. We know what uh, people's payments are today and that does change. Um, and that, that can vary on uh, buyer's affordability. One thing that we just discussed as a team and we're brainstorming ideas is, let's say if we were in the market where we were having to consider price drops, what would that look like? Um, and let's say we had to reduce our price by $5,000 to get the house sold. What if we got a little more creative and we took that same $5,000 as a seller and we invested it into a rate buy down for the buyer? Let's just talk about that a little bit more. If I took that $5,000 and I dropped my price $5,000 on my home, the buyer's payment is only gonna change about $30 a month. If I took the same $5,000 and I was willing to invest in my buyer's interest rate, I could save them hundreds and hundreds of dollars per month. So if we can get more competitive when we are in that situation, if the market is shifting or if we are seeing price reductions, we're gonna to go to work and try and come up with other things that's gonna keep as much money in our seller's pocket and also help our buyers as much as possible. All of a sudden using that $5,000 helps them both tremendously. And I just think that as we move through, there's gonna be more of that that's gonna to need to happen because we are going into, we're going into a little bit of, of a shift, a change, I mean, it's real, there are some people who aren't working right now, so. Yeah. I think it's interesting too, how much the virus has changed the market and changing the whole landscape of it. Like Jessica touched on our great um, mortgage partners and you touched a little bit on how much rates have been changing. Um, it's been cool. I personally have been refinancing my home because rates have been so great, um, but it's been great. The lenders we've worked with have kept us informed of rates are a little bit crazy right now. Like kind of where do you want to be? And we'll just watch it and we'll lock when you're ready. Um, so it's cool to have such good partners that take care of you and will help work to get you the best deal you, you can. So our team obviously will do that. And then the lenders we work with as well, are all of us are working to, to get you in the best position possible. <laughs> True. We have, are there other questions too that we had that came in? I think we've touched on most of them. I think the only other one is um, if you want to address more directly home values. Um, if you think those will be dropping in six months or if those will be steady. Um, so that that's probably the biggest question that I've had is one, should I buy and two, should I sell? Like those two are, I was just going to make sure we didn't have uh, maybe check in and see if we have any questions that have come across our live. Oh, I've been following it. I haven't seen any come up yet. Good. Um, and as far as major, major swings as of right now, no, but again, you're also going to have different price points. So people who are looking um, under 200,000, there's not much out there under 200,000 right now. Um, so I don't expect us to see much of a softening at all under 200,000. Um, to 30, I'm still not expecting to see much of a softening. Uh, you get up into 350 to 500, there's probably gonna be a little bit more of a softening just depending on current inventory of where you're at. Um, but as of right now, things are still really, really solid. And you know what, what I'd like to do is, is really be, we're in the market and we're watching and we're just being, spending a lot of time um, with what inventory levels look like, how long days on market are, uh, what that looks like, and will if you're even considering selling in the next year, reach out so that we can make sure we're studying your specific neighborhood because that can shift things. Um, but I don't, I don't see that making a huge, a huge jump on prices one way or another. I think they'll stay just really pretty steady. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Sorry, Leish. Do we? No, go ahead to when, um, like what normally happens in the market from say now to the rest of the summer to how we feel like it's still gonna work with everything that's going on. Cause what's the traditional or what have we been trending for the last couple of years um, 
during these months? So in the past, it has, there is some seasonality that comes with it. And uh, Utah County is a little bit, uh, I would say that we see our biggest push of inventory come on the market March 1st through May 1st. We'll typically see close to 100 homes a day come on the market. Um, I'll be honest, we haven't seen that. So I can tell you inventory levels are still low, but buyers are still buying. Right. Um, and that typically is taking place because people uh, focus it around the school year. So with this, with kids being out, there's but not really a school kind of, year right now. Right. With it being a <laughs> summer break, whoop, uh, <laughs> we might want to, people that are selling could, you know, make that transition earlier, even with the market being low, because why wait until June? We've already, like you said, noticed that there's not a whole lot of houses on the market. Yeah, right now you still know what your interest rate is. If you were looking to make a move in June, it might right. make sense for you to go ahead and do that right now. Again, just because we know exactly what we're working with. Um, as homes come on, those inventory levels will go up if we don't have quite as many buyers. Up to this point in years past, inventory and buyers have traveled together. So we've had massive inventory come on March 1st, but we've also had massive buyers come on the market. Um, although people are pulling out and maybe not as many people are buying and selling, I think it's, again, it's, it's relatively speaking. I think we're traveling together. I'm not seeing that those changes happening. Huh. Does anybody else have any other, like I said, I haven't seen any other questions pop up, uh, but do you guys have anything else you want to add before we finish up? I want to just make sure we let people know that we will, that we're adapting, that, that whatever it's looking like, we want to adapt every day to whatever is happening and that I'm happy to do video calls. I'm happy to work through what your like individual situation might be. And um, I also just feel like I really appreciate our community. I appreciate our brokerage has worked really hard to move quickly and adapt. And yet they are all still here being 100% supportive and giving us all the tools and, and information that we need. I feel like the team has worked so stinking hard. We are in a really busy phase of our business right now. And, um, and I think Jessica said it earlier this morning that we just have to have a little grace with ourselves, that life looks a little different. It's, uh, we got homeschool going on at home and, and it's Wednesday and it feels like it's already been a pretty busy week and that we have to make sure that we're still taking care of ourselves and our neighbors and our community. I think we're missing, we're missing the interaction with each other. And Zoom is great, but I like, I really miss you ladies. I really miss our team. I miss being face to face with everybody. So I'm, I'm excited for it to pass because I, I need, I need you. <laughs> awesome well if nobody else has anything to add um if you guys don't mind I want to end on kind of a positive note because it has been kind of crazy and lots has been going on um would you guys mind sharing something positive something that gets you through the day whether it be a quote or something you do in your daily routine that helps you like unwind a little bit because I know like homeschooling kids is hard and staying home is hard and not talking to anyone is hard <laughs> What's one thing that keeps you positive during all of this? Um, I would say that the one thing that I do is um, I stay really consistent with my normal routine as much as possible. So um, my biggest stress release is running and I keep my social distance while running <laughs> but it really has been something that keeps me going uh there's a lot of anxiety in our society right now and as much as i don't want to feel it um i think we all have a little sense of it and the running helps keep me grounded 
and it keeps me just moving forward and making good decisions, healthier decisions, healthier options. Cause when you're sitting at home, you just want to eat all the junk food that you just everything, want. everything, everything, <laughs> everything. And I'd be lying to you if I hadn't made cookies, I have, and I ate them all, <laughs> but I have, I have gone running. <laughs> so that's the reality. Um, one thing that's made a difference for me, one is not getting on social media as much and even like slimming down who I follow. Like I don't want to follow KSL anymore. I just want to follow the people that make me happy and are posting <laughs> happy things. <laughs> been being selective. <laughs> so we've enjoyed a few dance parties at our house. That's typically what has to happen after we've been out at the store, whether it's at Costco or at Macy's or whatever it is. It's it's there's a lot of energy out in the world. And so I have loved that Courtney's done a really good job and she will turn on really good music. And the reality is we need to dance. Like we need to let so much of that go. And one day I told her, we'll just do some like live dance parties here. It'll be a good time. So <laughs> I, I agree to that. Blast your music. Just, you know, blast your music, dance. Costco was even playing that the other day when I went um, in their <laughs> foyer, just like, and I'm the only one bebopping around. Um, but that's, it's good for your soul. It's totally it good for your soul. So, and you know, I know it's gloomy today, but for me, being home with my kids, having them work on projects, I know it's not fun for Shay, but in the, the end result of our projects and us being able to go and enjoy as a family out in our yard, like that's a huge thing for us that we're working towards having the projects finished. So when we're all really still stuck as a family in our home, then we can be outside and enjoying, you know, what we've built out there, so. Um, for me, I kind of woke up this morning just feeling um, grateful for um, the community as a whole worldwide. I, I realize it's not happening everywhere, but there's a huge, sacrifice I mean there's a lot on social media and there's a lot of funny memes but in reality we've really been asked to stay home and as a whole when you really look at that that's a giant sacrifice in in a million different facets whether it's being paid and staying home whether it's being unpaid and staying home um we facetimed Ethan's teacher this morning and you know she's She's helping me with fourth grade math, but she's on the other end trying to do 11th and you know eighth grade math. She's like, I, I'm not equipped for that. I think a lot of people are finding themselves, um, I think before the virus hit, we all felt a sense of wearing a lot of hats and having a lot of responsibilities. And so I do think it's interesting as we've all been asked to put on 15 more hats, that we we are at home and we're with our families and hunkered down and there is this time to to be more quiet and to do the dance parties and just to just to be a little bit more still um enjoy those moments huh? yeah because i mean i think there is what jess said i think there's a sense of anxiety or fear that all mm -hmm. it is real and that is out there but um being home isn't necessarily fearful. It's it's what we're being asked to do, but finding those moments of still running a business, getting homeschool done, staying on a schedule. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot that comes into still being really successful while doing what we're supposed to be doing right now to protect our families and the people that we love. So. I have just found myself seeing so much gratitude and little acts of service of, we got a little treat on our door from a neighbor of just how much they miss playing with Ethan. And it's just cool to watch people slow down, even though we're probably busier than we've ever been and just really focusing on what's important and, 
and Epsom salt baths. That's what I would say. <laughs> At the end of the day, um, an Epsom salt bath is like where I come back to like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the piece is that this is, this is going to pass, that this is just a moment in time. And that's coming out on the other side and realizing that the viruses just put everything on pause. Yeah. And when it's unpaused, it, it's, it's not like everything's just going to fall. It's unpaused. We're going to go back. Our lives are going to go back. The market it will still be there. And hopefully in the meantime, we've kept great people around us. I, I have talked to my mom more this week than, or in the last two weeks than I ever have. And I think just figuring out that we have to stay connected. That was one thing Shannon said yesterday is a lot of FaceTime. A lot of FaceTime. So do, I think it's pretty cool that when we've been asked to stay home, that technology is fiercer than it's ever been. So yeah, that, that's a blessing for sure. We'll keep learning it. I'm not sure if this all got broadcasted, but maybe so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and if anybody needs something, that's the other thing is, is if you need real estate questions, ask. If you need something else, ask. Yeah. I, I don't have a ton of toilet paper, but I will share. You know, I don't have a ton of food, but I will share anything. If there's stuff you need, the positive is that we know a lot of people and we can connect you to the people who can help you. And so I just hope we can be part of that community, part of helping, part of being able to connect people. So that's the last thing I was going to say too, is I have still heard of a lot of people that can't get formula and diapers, and I may not have that at my house, but we can figure out how to get it. So if you don't have what you need, or you know someone who doesn't have what they need, um, let us know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and thank you. Appreciate it. We'll try this again sometime. Soon. Soon. <laughs> I never know how to sign off, guys.